What's up guys, Exchange here, and today I wanna to talk about Codex and their practicality. So the whole reason this even came to me was I was sorting a bunch of old hard drives, I found a bunch of old footage from like 2012, 2013 that I shot on a GoPro Hero 3 Black, and the files were astronomical. I'm talking like 18 gigabytes for like 10 minutes of footage. And I'm like, what the hell did I do back then? Why were these files so big? And what's actually going on? And how should I store them going forward? So I did a bunch of research on Codex and learned all about the different uh, ProRes 422 and Proxy versus LT versus Adaptive Bit Rates and H.264. And while that's all cool and you should definitely go research all that, I wanted to talk today about the practicality of it and thinking about what was shot with your footage, when you shot it, and what are you actually gonna do with your footage. So for me, I looked at these things and went back to 2012, which it's a long time ago, so you're trying to think, okay, what was actually happening? And then should I put this in like a huge Apple ProRes 422HQ format, or can I store it in something in the H.264 container and keep it a lot smaller um, without over losing much quality or inequality at that? And I developed a test here, as I'll show you in Premiere Pro, to look at practical footage and see how it actually worked through all the codecs. And then if I wanted to do some extreme modifications to it later in post, what would my limitations be if I stored it in the smaller file format versus the larger file format? So let's go into Premiere Pro and check it out. All right, so here we are in Premiere Pro. And first off, I wanna show you, this is what I was talking about. I found all this old GoPro um, footage and I wanted to convert it and it was you can 367 gigabytes um, and when I convert it to h264 it's only 60 gigabytes but I'm like uh, am I gonna lose stuff so what I did was take two different clips one that was shot at night in a club and one that was shot as I was driving um, from LA to San Diego during the day and as you can see, I started with the GoPro 3 Hero Black Original. I then converted it to a 422, a 422 Proxy, 422 LT, and then Adaptive High Bit Rate H.264. I did the same with the other footage over here that was shot at the nightclub. So now we dig into Premiere Pro and we'll start with the dark footage because dark footage was always so hard back then and is still hard today. And so we look at this is our original GoPro Hero 3 Black that I shot. And this file was, if we shoot back over, it was 557 megabytes. So I'm like, okay, that's pretty big for how short is this clip? This clip is only 25 seconds. So I'm like, okay, why was it so big? What was going on? And what do we really need to do? So I've uh, gone to a frame here at looking at, um, you could see some noise, you see the light, you see what's going on. And so how I stacked this here in Premiere was I just layered all the different layers on top of each other going from the original to the better, more data intense codecs, which take more room to the lowest one that I wanted to test here, which would be adaptive high bit rate. So if we go in here and we look at the Hero Black original versus 422 and we switch it, so now we're looking at the 422 footage, now we're looking at the original, I don't see a bit of difference right there. If we go to the 422 LT, still not seeing any difference. If we go to the proxy, still not seeing any difference. If we go to the adaptive high bit rate, slight difference, slight, slight difference. It almost uh, appears that it is some noise reduction. So if we zoom in a little bit, let's zoom to 150%, and we can look right here around her face, his face, and then up by these lights or the DJ booth. And as we flip it on, you can see we did lose a little bit of information, but it smoothed it. And honestly, almost looked like it applied a noise reduction, which I don't like the noise in the original shot. So to me, I like the adaptive high bit rate the best. But then I was thinking, okay, what if I wanted to do adjustment layers layer later down the line? Would I be setting myself up for failure? So I did a, if we double click this um, and we go look at the coloring on this, you can see what I did on this adjustment layer here with the brighter. I applied, oops, go back to our basic correction. I applied, I pulled up the shadows, I pulled up the whites, I pulled up the exposure. Um, and so I said, okay, what would that do if I want to brighten the footage? So if we brighten it, you can see you're still able to brighten it quite a bit. And if we go back to fit, we can see it a little bit better. So if we go back to fit, 
make this window bigger and we take it on off you're still able to brighten it but that is with the adaptive one so now let's see how does it work with the other one with the original footage if i kept a bigger file well it's again it's negligible the difference and then let's see if i used uh like a 422 format those as they should be are basically identical but they take a lot more room so again high bit rate for me works i wanted to say okay i also did a blade motion i also was like okay uh i want to apply a lut on this and uh let's see where's my man adjustment layer if we go to my creative lut this was a blade motion lut from uh make art now his mobius one make art now that guy is sick I can one day hope to be as good as him. Big shout out to him. I've been learning a lot watching his channel. So super cool guy. But so this is his Blade Mobius um, LUT. And when you look at it, I mean, first off, it looks freaking sick in the club in Miami here. Um, and I'm only applying this to the adaptive high bit rate right now. Versus if you look at the original footage, same thing. So you could still apply LUTs. You could still do things. And it looks pretty good. Um, I did one more adjustment layer here where I did a uh, blue ice look does not look good in the club at all but you'll see later when i'm doing the driving footage it looks pretty cool so those were the adjustment layers and what i looked at so in the club footage i'm very happy with this h264 adaptive high bit rate um which it makes sense because when i shot with this back in the day in 2012 2013 that's probably what the gopro was shooting at was h264 and i somehow thinking I was going to get more data out of this, upsampled it and in their cinema studio and applied stuff and made this huge file, and I don't really need it. Um, and now this is not always the case, obviously. If you're shooting with like a black magic or anything nowadays that has all this extra data throughputs, you're going to want to use ProRes. So don't take this as, oh, you just use adaptive high bit rate, you're not losing anything. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying focus on what data you have, what you're using, and then run a test like this and see like, what do you really need to do? So, okay, that was the night footage. Now I wanted to hop over to some driving footage just to see some daytime stuff. So let's scroll through here. Let's find a nice little clip uh, as I'm driving to San Diego. Oh, here we go. So we can kind of see with the sky and the sign and the car. So it's kind of a cool clip right here to see. We got, you know, all this information and see how it affects. So again, same thing. Let's step through and let's look at the 422 footage because right now we're looking at the original black, um, the Hero 3 black footage. Here's the 422. Not a bit of difference. Here's the ProRes 422 LT. I'm not seeing any difference. If you are, maybe my eyes aren't as good. And then here's the proxy. Still looks identical. Now, if I go to the adaptive high bit rate, with this daytime footage and not as much noise in this, it looks almost identical. So again, I like the adaptive high bit rate. Saves a ton of space because on this file, since this was a long file, this was a 2.59 gigabyte file for two minutes and 20 seconds. And when we go to our adaptive high bit rate, we get it down to 500 megs. So that's almost, uh, you know, one fifth of the storage space there, um, you know, that we're saving. So tremendous, you know, again, and when you have a bunch of files like I did, 366 gigabytes, if you go to adaptive high bit rate, spoiler alert, that's what I chose to convert all these to and keep at after doing this, you only have 58 gigabytes of data. So tremendous amount of data savings and, um, you know, I'm not really losing anything. So let's go back though into Premiere and just look at, like I say, if I wanted to do like a, um, a LUT on it. So here was this blue ice high contrast LUT. Kind of looked pretty sick, gave it a little old school thing. Obviously this is way overdone. I was trying to really push everything just to see the limitations of what I was doing and then you could scale back. So this was this blue ice um, with uh, pushing the saturation and just to see where things started breaking up in the image or what was happening. So let's zoom to 150%. So we can kind of actually that's a little little high, maybe zoom to 100 percent there so we can kind of see what's going on here, focusing on the sky, this road detail in the sign. So if we go. So right now we're looking at the adaptive high bit rate. If we take that off, we're looking at back to the uh, black originals and that's the H264 adaptive. That's the original. 
basically identical. Honestly, I like the sky better in the H.264. If you look up in the upper moon region, I think to me, again, it kind of did some noise reduction and it looks great. Um, so if we take that off, though, let's step through. This is the 422, which looks basically identical. The 422 LT looks identical to the original footage. The proxy looks identical. And I like this adaptive high bit rate. And then just for fun, we put this blade motion on and we kind of look like we're in an alien apocalypse uh, sci-fi movie. But uh, same thing. You can kind of see along the road, there's ridging and stuff like that. But you see, I mean, it's breaking up for sure. I mean, but this was shot in 2012 um, on the Hero 3. Not, not the greatest sensor in today's terms and stuff like that. Um, but it's still usable footage, which is really cool. And I can use it in this H.264 and save all this space. So if we take that off and just go back to the original footage um, that I had with the big file, nearly identical. So let's check out the footage moving. So we're going to start here with our H.264. And if we drop back to the original footage... So now this is our original footage. And we'll switch back to H.264 here real quick. So buffers real quick. There it goes. And you can see basically looks identical in real world usage, even if we throw this LUT on it. So this is the H.264 with the LUT on it. And that is the original footage with the LUT on it. So, no difference there. Now let's go back to our Miami nightclub footage. And let's go back here. So let's start it right here. Let's put this, uh, let's do without the uh, any LUTs or anything on it. Start with our original footage and then we'll do our H.264. That's our original. Switch it over. There's our H.264. So again, as you can see, on playback there, H.264 looks just as clean, um, slight noise reduction, but for my intents and purposes, we're good to go. My conclusion for me is I'm going to store everything in this H.264 adaptive high bitrate format. Um, now, how I converted all this was I used Adobe's Media Encoder, um, which is super cool. Um, if you have a lot of footage like this, cause you can just drag and drop everything from one folder and then convert it. So, um, I could do another video on this later, but I'll just show you real quick how I did this and what settings I chose. And again, you need to go through and do this with your own footage and make sure don't just like blast your big files, save it in H.264 and later go, well, that didn't work because this guy told me it would work. It didn't work. It's very dependent on what was your source footage and what was your long-term thing. With with the GoPro, it was originally being shot at H.264. I upsampled it, and it shows. When you add all this extra data, if there's nothing there for it to upsample, it doesn't do anything, basically. So I'm just converting it back down into a much better archival format, but I can still pull clips from it. So here you can see this was where I did the initial test, and then I converted all these files. And so I used well, over here on the left you can see there is on this H.264 drop down match source adaptive high bit rate. And let's see if it'll go again. And you can see, so it's doing um, a VBR one pass. It's targeting 15 with a max of 19 megabits per second. And I actually found that when we go to the footage and we look at the adaptive high bit rate, which is cool, you can go in QuickTime, hit Command I, go up here. We actually averaged around 27 to 30 megabits per second on this footage. And these were shot at uh, 27 by 1440 um, at the time. Um, and But, you know, we're still getting everything out of it. And we're still getting a good bandwidth throughput. And you can go ahead and still do all your LUTs color corrections. And if you need to brighten it or whatever you need to do super cool so my conclusion from all this is i'm going to store for archival purposes all of my old gopro footage back on my hero 3 in this h264 adaptive high bit rate format instead of taking all this data space with apple pro res and all that and it came out to i think about 17 percent when i actually calculated through um, the file size difference so massive data storage savings as i move forward um, if you guys enjoyed this video or if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Check everything out on my channel. I go by exchange. Hit me up. Let me know what you guys are also interested in, and I'll make a video about it. Peace.